demands are very high. The standards are very high. Okay. All right. So let's. Okay. So please remember. So let's recap quickly what we did in the last session. Okay. What uh, we had. Uh, this is in your notes. In the session outline, this file is in your notes. Okay. So the last we just two, two uh, understandings of uh, most of the class was spent on understanding eyeball. It's a very important concept. You will not find it explained like this in. in uh, I think very few textbooks have it this way. Uh, so and especially the last one which we discussed, which we are going to discuss later after we do the H wall calculation. So we've done two understandings of eyeball. The first is that uh, it's an indicator of option prices. Okay, a eyeball chart is going up and down. Okay, so here when you're looking at this chart. Okay when the eyeball chart is going down that means options in general are becoming less expensive when the eyeball chart is going up options in general are becoming more expensive that's how you interpret eyeball the simplest way to look at it and second we also saw that eyeball is basically this is the mechanical answer that it is the ball input in the OVM when you take your OVM whereas we don't seem to have a ah here we have the OVM so it's the ball input because everything in the OVM pretty much everything except for the dividend yield and the volatility everything else is objective okay uh, or observable from market prices otherwise observable from market prices the real question marks in the vault in as far as the inputs into this OVM are concerned are the return on the asset which in the case of stock markets is the uh, dividend yield and then the real big problem is this the wall because this model expects you know just like your CAPM cost of equity uh, model okay remember you take the RF as the RF that is going to that, that is applicable to the period in front of you okay you take the government bond yield okay which is like you know doing a 10-year project ideally you should take a 10-year government bond yield and that's the 10 years ahead of you okay so similarly everything else in the inputs is actually meant to be whatever is going to be the expected return on the market excess return on the market in looking forward so this is also a forward-looking input the market uh, the model intends this to be a forward-looking input so it is that so therefore it's actually when you're putting it into the OVM and just trying to do a fair value analysis this is the user's own assessment of what will be the ball in the future okay we'll see later how the ball is calculated but then you have independently you have the market also determining option prices right now obviously because uh, we have take, uh, taken Microsoft options the option trader you can set it up this way you can look at these um, yeah, you can look at these, uh, uh, this kind of setting that I've got. This helps you to lay out the options uh, with the, you can see the days to expiry. Three days to expiry, very limited use, but it will have some value when you're looking to sell options. If you take a very short term view. Okay. And uh, so you can lay it out like this. And then if I want to collapse this, if I want something which is longer than 17 days, I can actually just, uh, let me just. Uh, Is this the edge? Yeah, I want to just keep it so everything should be visible. Seems to be behaving a little odd. Now the whole box is in here. Yeah, okay. So you can see these option prices. Okay, we're looking at 17 days to expiry. So we're looking at these option prices. So if you had uh, if you had an option model which was let's say giving you uh, let's say for these 140 calls, let's just focus on the 140 Trade calls. By now everybody is familiar with how to read at least these two columns and these two columns. Yeah. Is that? Okay. So these are the and these are the strikes. Okay, and you see that. So the the wired connection also seems to be quite unstable. Okay, so you can see here that let's look at the 140 calls. You can see the uh, this is obviously not live because the U.S. equity markets are not closed. So 212 to 24 is the closing bid offer spread on the 140 calls for Microsoft. Okay, so now if you did a mo if you used an OVM for the same uh, period for the Microsoft calls, and let's say you got a value of the OVM. So remember, OVM is a fair value model. Okay, so you enter the in Inputs as a user, okay, based on what you think are the correct inputs for this mark, for this particular option, and you may have entered a certain vol number, and uh, this market data connection. So this might have given you an option price of three dollars, but then you find that the market option price is somewhere around two eighteen or something like that. Okay, so uh, in that case, uh, you want to see what. 
uh, if you're getting an option price of three dollars it obviously means that your wall input is too high compared to what the so the question that you ask is if the market were actually using the same OVM and if the market price was equal to the fair value okay if the market price was equal to the fair value then uh, essentially what what wall input is the market using to arrive at this price okay that's the question that you're asking okay which uh, which is a legitimate question to have one of the legitimate questions you can ask so that's what mechanically eyeball means okay so eyeball is basically the ball input in the OVM which will give you a OVM uh, output okay which is equal to the market price okay so you work it out and we also learned that IVM uh, the eyeball actually when you calculate the eyeball if you'll notice if you do this during US hours obviously now you'll see there's an NA figure that where that NA is in the US hours you'll see the percentage figures there those are the eyeballs and you'll notice that the bid offer on the eyeballs is also consistent the bid is lower than the offer so the bid eyeball when you buy mouse over the bid price you'll get one eyeball figure that will be lower than the eyeball figure that you get when you mouse over the offer yes that's consistent with the rule that we learned that if you have a higher eyeball that means higher option prices so that's consistent and this will apply even if you go to the puts you'll see that the bid bid eyeball when you mouse over the bid the bid eyeball will be lower than the offer eyeball okay so now we don't have the eyeballs because the market is not open so here so essentially so this is what we learned the mechanical answer we just wasted a little bit of time recapping that uh, but anyway so uh, let's go on to the next because we have a lot of material to cover we are trying to i'm trying what i'm trying to do now is actually again i'm racing i might have covered it in a different sequence if we had the luxury of doing all the theory first and then doing the project right now we don't have that luxury because the project project is looming so i'm quickly trying to just ram in the basic uh, theoretical framework you need in order to do the project in a reasonably intelligent way right okay so as you uh, as you saw in the or uh, in your nsc trading project as well you will have to some extent or maybe to a great extent you will feel that you don't have adequate knowledge to do what you're doing right but that as you can, can understand is basically not we can't help that because of the structure of the program okay so when you come into this all the material that you need for trading okay is really not covered in your fm1 and fm2 so therefore i have to start from scratch with a uh, you know a knowledge program for trading and basic uh, theory so i have to give you the theory as the project is starting so that's okay it's like throwing the baby into the water before it knows how to swim okay before it learns how to walk apparently that's what they do in russia in russia before the babies learn to walk they just throw them in the water and then they figure out eventually <laughs> Well, the Russians have been very good at sports, uh, at least historically, they've been very good at sports. Okay, so, um, all right, so let's go on to the next point, which we have here, which I'll paste into here. So, so the next thing is quickly, we're just going to go through some because we're going to arrive at a decision making matrix. Okay, so uh, just go through this. I'll just put this into your notes so that we don't have, you don't have to take notes and we can do it very quickly. But we look at this i pasted it but we look at this so now we are trying to identify option positions just read this it's uh, pretty obvious i think you already know about this yes we have two types of options and from our earlier project we know from our earlier course we know that there are two types of positions yes long and short so therefore you can actually have how many types of option positions four okay yes sg1 yes what are the four types of option positions can you recite what would be the four types of option positions the long call yeah uh, yes so long put long call long put then so short call and short put. Short call and short put. Is that clear? Okay. So um, uh, so long call, long uh, long put, short call, short put. Okay. All right. So these are so basically what we have done. We've just combined our knowledge of two types of options, and we've come up with uh, and combined it with two types of positions, and then we've come up with the listing of long, uh, the four types of option positions. Okay. So now we need to look at something which is uh, now we're going to look at basic decision making framework. Remember when we looked at the decision problems with respect to options okay 
when we looked at the decision problems with respect to options um, all right okay um, yeah let me just launch this this is already in your this is already in your uh, you can just launch it you can see that it's in your fdrm calc file and since that file is already open i'm not going to um, this particular matrix now we're going to look at an option decision trading a uh, decision making matrix remember when we listed out the specific decision problems for options we said uh, in the list of general decision problems in running an investment fund when we are dealing with options we have some additional problems because it's not sufficient to solve the buy sell problem you have to now specify buy sell what buy call or sell call or buy put or sell put so because of options you have some additional complications okay so how are we going to come up with the answers to those uh, additional questions so here's your option strategy matrix which is in your spreadsheet okay this is what we have okay so what you're going to have to do so basically understand so you've got those four positions that you can see in the matrix this is obviously intended to it's not pretty because you know i'm not able to fig, uh, manipulate excel that well but um, the spreadsheet that well this is meant to be done on a, a as a diagram so this is basically it means that if you are bullish on the underlying asset and you're bullish on eyeball then you buy calls this is what it meant first uh, you this is already there you don't need to draw this framework it's in your spreadsheet okay but try to understand it so what i'm trying to show here because the the drawing is not perfect so you have a view on the underlying assets and you have a view on the eyeball now the view on the underlying asset this aspect you're already familiar with you've done it in your nse trading project you have a, you are accustomed to taking a view on the underlying asset okay various equities that you've traded so now you knew earlier you knew that when you had a bullish view on the underlying asset you would buy the underlying asset when you had a bearish view on the underlying asset you would sell the underlying asset okay so now because of options things are a little more complicated okay so one additional element of com complication is that is no longer for option trading okay and this again we are doing option trading really from uh, the i'll just give you a little bit of a This actually is, uh, I, I'll write that in later on, but essentially see, I'll just tell you now in, in this itself that there are two, there are two types of option trading that you can do. Okay. There's an option trading done by a directional speculator in options. Okay. So in your uh, project, okay, let's see where that is actually, that should be here somewhere. What I want to, what I want to just clarify is that. Um, just repeating that but what I want to just clarify is that what we are learning now is actually yeah this is the one that I want to talk about okay um, what I'll do is I'll just uh, just post this entire amount here as well this is the topic actually the eyeball versus underlying views and strategies strategies matrix so just like I told you that when you're doing something if you're feeding somebody only uh, South Indian food, you should just call it South Indian food, not Indian food. So similarly, the kind of option trading that we are going to cover initially, and in fact, we won't have time to cover the other type of option trading. Okay, that applies. This is the last part that is relevant. I'm going to just take this and uh, okay, that you already have in your thing. Okay, let's put it here. So what I'm trying to emphasize here is for those who will be buying selling options only okay that means essentially here i'll add one more element that is so remember these two terms that we learned when we talked about the different types of players in the market so with that we have arbitragers we have speculators and we have hedgers okay and within speculators we have two categories we have directional speculators and market makers okay and you understand why that distinction is made because they require totally different market conditions for their success okay so now what i want to clarify is that the kind of option trading that i'm going to treat you now and that you're going to be doing in your project is only one kind of option trading it is the option trading that is done by directional speculators 
in options okay using options it is not the kind of option trading which is done by option market makers which is a very more a much more there are elements of uh, directional speculation also in the market makers approach but their market maker of the market makers approach to option trading is more complex it has many other elements okay so we are not really going to be covering that okay uh, we are going to be because that's more complex we'll start with a simpler approach so what you're learning in your project and what you'll be doing is basically uh, the those who will be who will call them directional speculators so you already know this term okay so I'm just writing this this is the important thing that whatever we are discussing now the theory that we are discussing now some of it will apply even to uh, market makers but the market makers approach is uh, even more complex than what we are going to cover okay so uh let's look at this well, let's go back to the matrix then we can just look at the text most of the text is already written here so you will not need to write down much okay so this is your see we already covered the option positions so what we are coming to is a wise uh, well, let me just explain the matrix first then we'll understand we'll come and look at the text a little bit okay so i just want to make sure that everybody understands what i intended to show in this drawing so obviously it would be much nicer if i drew it on the board with a uh, with a pen with a chalk or whatever but within this what i'm intending to show you is that uh, this is the underlying asset if you have a bullish view on the underlying asset and a bullish view on eyeball you buy calls okay so you everyone understands what I'm trying to show here okay the content I'll explain later so this is what we mean so in option trading uh, uh, you have the additional element that you have to also now take a view on the eyeball okay and you're already familiar with you have some basic idea of eyeball okay so you will get in this what I suggest you use is uh, I prefer long-term charts okay I'm a big fan of all the data that you can get in the world oh my god I just stopping this okay I was able to actually but I'm logged into my um, I have okay fine we'll look at that uh, chart later we'll uh, we'll just have this okay so if you look at any of these um, now I won't be able to launch that page that's going to be a problem I would like to okay so let's go back to this that uh, you know how to get that chart okay that chart is given to you as a link okay optionistics that's the website that link is already in your notes so what you have to do now is essentially you have to take a view on eyeball as well okay so you have um, Okay. so here's another chart link which is already this link is also given to you okay so here when you look at Oracle okay this is just one so if you want to look at this for we'll just show you how to change it if you want to change this to Facebook you just enter FB here in the symbol and it'll change and you'll notice the numbers will change okay it was 2864 now the historical the H fall is lower here okay the numbers have all changed okay and what you've got is here you've got we can take everything from here okay so this is the Facebook uh, price chart okay this is the stock price of Facebook which we can get from uh, this also the other site which is working I need to get that site cleared um, let's just look at so we'll look at Facebook here you can see that it's fallen a little bit okay I think the last time we looked at it was so we'll try to look at it uh, with uh, 60 minutes so that we have about a year's yes not exactly a year but okay something like this okay so you have some Facebook chart data this is the price data so if you're trading Facebook options so let's get the framework clear now and understanding the decision matrix okay how is it going to work if you're going to be trading options as a directional speculator you have to take if you're trading trading options on Facebook's you have to take a view on Facebook let's have a slightly longer term chart okay so you have to take a view on the underlying asset which is Facebook common stock okay which way is it going is it you think the big move is going to happen to the downside or is the big move going to happen to the upside that you have to take a call okay big picture call okay and then obviously you have the other decision that uh, then if you were just trading uh, before you get to the eyeball part if you were just trading the underlying if you have a big picture bullish view would you buy it immediately or would you wait for a lower level 
to buy it with a limit order okay those decisions you still have to take okay so the underlying view remains unchanged additionally we have now for trading options okay let's say you're bullish okay let's say we look at Facebook and you're bullish okay on Facebook and you think that uh, this will and let's say you want to buy it at market itself you think right now from here it's going to shoot up to 220 230 etc okay that's your view so your view on the underlying is bullish now for option trading now we are walking you through the framework now please pay attention so make sure you label you're able to figure it out okay in real life what you will do is you will use that optionistic chart because the optionistic chart has about two two and a half years of eyeball data okay so you should use longer term data as much data as you can for forming your view and today right now because we are constrained the network is not allowing me to access that website so i am going to go to this here so if you have this eyeball eye volatility chart uh, website okay so you notice what i did it was showing me oracle earlier i just entered uh, the facebook symbol here okay and i can change it and it will give me the new output and so along with the a lot of number numbers that it gives me okay you can see the uh, prices also being displayed okay you can also see here what is we are what we are interesting now uh, interested in right now is that now i have to also take a view on eyeball for option trading it's not sufficient so this is a one year chart of eyeball but first use the optionistic chart and then move to this, this chart if you want to okay so we are going to show you the theory with just the one year chart so now what you have to do is you also have to take a view on eyeball as if it's uh, any other asset which goes up and down so you have to now take a view and decide whether this is going to go up or down okay whether the trend of eyeball is down or up and which way do you are you a mean reversion guy or a, tra uh, a momentum guy which one which way do you uh, guy or girl or which way do you want to go so you got to take a view so where is your eyeball chart which one is the eyeball chart okay it seems red to you it's kind of orange type of thing right the blue one is the h wall we'll come to h wall later we don't know right now what h wall is okay we'll do that calculation later but we are really just going to focus on the eye wall chart all right so now you look at this eye wall chart and take a view okay and let's say i take a view that eye wall is also going going to go up i see that this eye wall has ranged from this level it's come down a lot and i think it's turning around and i think this is going to go up okay maybe to 45 50 once again okay so right now the eye wall is around 32 or so you can see all the numbers can you see the numbers parul can you read the numbers on the right hand scale 30 35% you can read it pulkit you can read it you can't read it now you can read it yes okay so i follow this uh, uh, orange eyeball chart and i see what's been happening to eyeball over the last one year and i have to take a view on the eyeball in this case i let's say you can also take the other view but i let's say i for the, because i want to walk you through a typical decision okay so i take a view let's say that the eyeball is going to go up from here okay remember everything that you can see everything that you do in a finance role you have to take a view on markets you took the view on the underlying asset now you have to take a view on the eyeball my view the eyeball is also going to go up so where does this put me in the box when i go back to the box what do i do uh, buy call okay so i buy calls okay now you see the logic of this okay which is explained in your notes okay so here i buy call is this clear to everybody the decision making framework where we locate ourselves so we have moved one step ahead because earlier when we just decided to buy or to sell the underlying asset when we deal with options we have an additional problem should i if i've decided to buy now should i buy calls or should i buy puts should i if i'm selling sell puts or calls so here i've solved that problem as well the additional problem i've also solved by taking a view on the underlying asset and then taking a view on the eye wall okay so the combination of these views leads me to buy call is this clear gulati are you following yes arora okay so you follow the logic so far okay so this is the thing so this is what it is meant to be this is if i had a bearish view on eyeball and a bearish view on the underlying asset i would be selling calls this is what the framework is supposed to tell you okay this is what the framework is trying to tell you so here what is the theory that we have here okay why what is the reason for why is this uh, why does this uh, matrix say this because remember what's going to happen now you can understand the theory which is explained here that if eyeball is when eyeball eyeball rises option prices will rise okay so basically the idea is that you notice here what's happening that when eyeball view is when the view on the eyeball is bullish when the view on the eyeball is bullish if your view is right what's going to happen is all option prices will rise both puts and calls will rise in value 
because remember that eyeball affects the time value uh, through the eyeball changes in eyeball it affects the time value of options so when eyeball rises all option prices will rise okay so that's why you notice here in this uh, actually this thing if you if you look at the contents of this particular framework okay you can split it up essentially how has this been constructed your eyeball when the eyeball goes up the option prices will go up all option prices will go up that's why if you see under the bullish column for eyeball both the decisions are buy because you're dealing with options are you following this make sure you understand this frame part of the framework that will help that will cement the idea of the connection between uh, the impact of eyeball on option prices okay that if the eyeball rises then option prices will rise that's why under the bullish column of eyeball both the decisions are to buy buy options and buy options both but what kind of option to buy is this first part clear to everybody oh. yes may, may, are you following okay so under eyeball bullish view everything is buy options buy options now what option to buy that's divide decided by the row because the row side is giving you the views on the underlying asset okay so obviously when your view on eyeball is bullish you are going to have to buy options but that doesn't solve the problem for you because you still need to know whether you want to buy call options or put options okay so that gets decided by the view on the underlying assets because obviously if your view is that facebook is going up if your view is Facebook is going up and you're already because of your view on eyeball you're already in the buy options box you're only asking yourself given my given that my view on the underlying asset is up is bullish should I buy a call option or should I buy a put option this is clear now and the answer is what should be the answer Aurora what should I buy what option should I buy if my view on the underlying uh, Facebook common stock is bullish what option should I buy call or put what? call why Let's say the strikes are always at the money okay let's say we are talking always about at the money options so when you say buy call that means you're telling me to buy a 178 call so my question to you is uh, okay I understand that your view is that Facebook is stock is gonna go up okay then what well, uh, then you're asking me to buy the 178 call but why are you asking me to buy the 178 call not the 178 put you assume that here you assume underlying that I want to make money everybody wants to make money we have to make that assumption okay uh, so if I want to make money then why should I buy the call and not the put the 178 strike is this clear the strike is 178 all right so if we go back to our option price option here let's say the underlying is also 178 and this is also once exercise price is also 178 let's say these are slightly longer dated calls um, 60 day calls okay so 7.76 is the option price so uh, and the put is worth 6.6 .6. okay now you're telling me that if my view on the underlying Facebook stock is the is, is bullish that is I expect it to shoot up to 220 and uh, 225 etc then you're telling me to buy the 178 call now justify your decision why should I buy the call and not the put in terms of uh, justify your decision by using terms like intrinsic value and things like that is my question clear yes or no others also don't seem to be convinced that my question is clear is my question clear we took a view on the eyeball of Facebook options and we said the eyeball is definitely going up okay then so that immediately put us in this particular decision framework here if the eyeball view is bullish that means I can only buy options okay now what options to buy call or put for that I took a view on the underlying asset and my view is that the underlying asset is bullish it's likely to shoot up now from 178 to straight away to 220 to 25 okay now Bharat is telling me to Aurora is telling me to buy the 178 calls I asked him whether I should buy the 170 whether I should buy the 178 call or whether I should buy the 178 put and both are at the money okay so now he's telling me you should buy the 178 call now my question to him is why and give me your answer in terms of intrinsic value and using terms like intrinsic value and all that yes is my question clear now Aurora is not clear about my question anybody who else was clear about my question yes did I explain the question in a very complicated way no we are clear that we want to buy options because our view on Facebook eyeballs is bullish. 
okay right so this is a forward looking view obviously what's going to happen because of the after we buy we are only concerned with what happens after we buy right if it shoots up before we buy then we are not able to make money the idea is that i should buy and then the stuff should happen my view should play out after i buy okay after i buy or sell so in this case i've decided that my view on eyeballs is bullish so i have to buy options now what options to buy call or put i take a for that for that i need to take a view on the underlying asset okay and my view on facebook common stock being the underlying asset is that it's very bullish it's going to shoot up right now from 178 to 220 etc and so aurora tells me to buy a call not a put so my question is why are you telling me to buy a call not a put based on my view and assuming that everybody wants to make money and so my question is can you explain this uh, decision in terms of intrinsic value yes sorry what's not the answer <laughs> Okay, so you've given the answer, but it's not really you have not gone into the 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 internal logic which I'm looking for. I understand what you're saying. You're basically saying, uh, you know, why will I eat pizza because I don't want to have dosa. So I want to, therefore I want if those are the only two foods available. Okay, so uh, that's no. I want to know why actually you're going to eat pizza because of something more deep. Okay, so the answer I'm looking for is this. Okay, the answer I'm looking for is uh, that if let's say if your view is correct, then as soon as you buy it, let's make a let's create an extreme example. Okay, that as soon as you buy at 178, the price shoots up to 220. Okay, then what happens if you had bought a call? Okay, if you had bought a call, what happens to the intrinsic value of the call? Does it increase or decrease? You bought the 178 call when it was at the money. As soon as you bought it, immediately after you buy it, the price of the underlying stocks to uh, asset moves up to 220, which used to be 178, now shoots up to 220. So now what's happened to the intrinsic value of the call that you were holding? It has increased. Okay, so therefore what has happened? So Ceteris Paribus, what has happened to the option price? It has also increased, right? So you have to always think of the option price as consisting of uh, uh, intrinsic value and time value. Okay, and so the main contributor to time value, of course, the, the, the expiry also contributes. Okay, like a five-year option is worth more than a one-year option. The expiry also contributes, but that's quite obvious. But the other major contributor after you buy the option to the time value is the eyeball. So here you can see, can you see, I hope you get the picture here, that the two main drivers of option prices, the two main drivers of option prices are the eyeball movement. As you can see here, eyeball also doesn't remain still. Even in a one-year chart, you can see you know, on the optionistic website, you'll see a lot more data. Remember when we were showing you the FP chart, okay? It was uh, showing you two years of data, a lot of big movement up and down, almost like a cycle, okay? So you can see here, eyeball itself in a, in a, in a one-year period, they might have even given you the range of eyeball. Um, yeah, you see the 52-week uh, eyeball range is, um, it should be not uh, yeah 52 week high and 52 week low it's around 52 point around 53 percent to 22 percent is what they've given you here okay so for facebook options for the last one year elapsed okay previous one year you have seen a range on the eyeball of around 53 to 22 percent okay so this moves around you can see that the eyeball in the chart itself you can see eyeball doesn't remain the same so after you buy the option obviously the expiry has been locked in because you have defined the option so there are the main contra so imagine this in your head that the main drivers of option the option value consists of the intrinsic value and the time value okay and the main driver of the time value after you bought the option is going to be the eyeball okay which moves around as you can see and then the main driver of the intrinsic value is going to be what the underlying price the movement in the underlying price because the intrinsic value is determined by what the, uh, the current price minus strike price so the, the relationship between the strike price and the or the distance between the strike price and the underlying price okay uh, again once again after you bought the option the strike price can't change anymore because you define the option in this case I have bought on Aurora's advice I have bought the 178 call 
So after I bought the 178 call, now I'm stuck with the 178 call. I can't change the strike price anymore. So what changes after I buy the call is the underlying keeps moving around. So therefore the underlying, the, the relationship between the underlying and the strike also keeps moving around, which means essentially what's happening, the intrinsic value is also moving around. Okay, so the time value is also moving around driven by the eyeball changes and the intrinsic value is moving around driven by the uh, underlying price changes. So are you getting the dynamic now? Yes. So earlier you were talking about uh, only underlying assets, you were tra trading only underlying assets in your previous projects, okay, in your previous project. Now you've got an addi additional uh, variable to deal with which is the eyeball. Now you have to also take a view on the eyeball because understand this here, what is written in your notes here is only this. It's a long, lot of text, but it, it might get a little confusing. But this we've already discussed when we discussed eyeball and when we discussed intrinsic value and time value, that the impact of the two can go, I mean, you don't know how it's gonna work out, okay? Both can move in your favor, both can move against you, one can move against you, one can go in your favor, one might offset the other, one, they may offset each other equally. So you don't really know what's what what's going to happen. Is this clear? Okay. So you have to understand that these two forces are at work, and the impact could be either way. It could go either way. So you might actually it is possible theoretically to find that you buy a call option, and uh, what happens after that? If you buy a call option, the underlying may move up, but your option might still actually decline in value because the eyeball impact is more. Eyeball has actually dropped after you bought the option. And the drop in the eyeball is more, has more impact through the time value, the loss of time value of the option, than the increase of intrinsic value from the movement of the underlying in your favor. I'm just giving you, has everybody, is everybody able to follow what? Okay, no, it's just, I'm just repeating, I'm just giving you an example of what I already explained earlier. There are two major drivers of option values, option prices after you bought it. Okay, one is the intrinsic value, and that's getting affected mainly by the movement of the underlying asset. Is this clear? Okay, are you following? If you keep the framework in your head, uh, the two levels of the framework that you have intrinsic value and time value. Intrinsic value is affected by the distance between the strike and the underlying. And once you buy the option, the strike can't change because you bought a specific option or sold the option, whatever you do. Once you transact, the parameters are fixed. Your expiry date is fixed. Your strike price is fixed. Am I right? Are you following what I'm saying? Yes? Okay. So therefore the only thing that yeah once I'll just say so therefore the only thing that can affect your intrinsic value is the movement in the underlying okay because you're talking about let's say just mechanically we write in a partially correct way uh, we write that underlying price minus strike price is the intrinsic value okay it's not okay but uh, if we write that if the strike price is fixed then only the underlying if the underlying price moves then that to total figure will change okay so the underlying price movement is affecting the intrinsic value constantly yes and then the eyeball movement is going to affect the time value because the expiry date is fixed so the time value is mainly affected by the expiry date. Okay, as I said, obviously five year insurance, what we were discussing with Rajan. If you buy three year car insurance, it's more expensive than one year car insurance. But once you bought the three year car insurance, that's it, you bought it now, you bought that option contract. Now what can change is the eyeball. That eyeball change, which is continuously, the eyeball is moving around constantly. Okay, so that is going to affect the time value of the option. So now the two major drivers of option prices you can see are the movements in the underlying price and the movements in the eyeball. Is this clear? So all I was saying is because if there are two factors, okay, like if it's as if like uh, you know the score, your team score is made out of uh, made up of what uh, Pius scores and what Sakshi Jain scores, then Sakshi Jain may score positive uh, some positive figure, Pius may score some negative figure, and Pius's negative may be more than her positive, so the net team score becomes minus. That's all I'm trying to say, essentially, because you have two components driving, so the, you don't know which the which way the impact will go. Both can go in your favor, both can go against you, one can go against you, one goes in your favor. So all I'm saying is that you might buy a call option and you might find that after you bought the call option, the underlying price has gone up. So you think that you should make money, right? But you might actually lose money because the eyeball may have dropped. Yes, Galati, are you following? 
this logic? You seem to be getting lost now. I think it's time to put you on the Rajasthani puppet uh, string, uh, Aroda, to keep both of you engaged. We'll seat Aroda behind you, and whenever you're falling asleep, he'll pull the puppet strings and he'll make you wake up like that. You know? So I think you're getting uh, you're getting lost now. So what is the problem? Which part? At which which part have you got lost? When you're getting lost, you shouldn't just give up. You should try to focus, force yourself to try and focus, right? Yes? Where have you got lost? We are discussing a very simple idea that essentially, and everything is in your notes, you can just see the pictures or you can just look at your notes. All we are saying is that the value of the option, which we have already done as a basic figure, a basic calculation very early on, that the value of the option, the, the price of the option consists of intrinsic value and time value. Have you followed this much? So what is driving intrinsic value? Here, intrinsic value is driven by this. Here the intrinsic value is zero. Because the underlying price and the strike price are the same. So if I make the strike exercise price, the strike price, if I make this much lower, like 150 or something, or even 160, now the which option has more which option has positive intrinsic value now if i make the exercise if i make the strike price 160 the underlying is still at 168 now which option has the call option or the put option which one now has positive intrinsic value 160 put has positive intrinsic value because if you sell when the market is at 178 if intrinsic value is what intrinsic value what we discussed you guys are not revising enough it's basically any positive profit zero pro a negative is not counted okay negative is not counted if you can make any positive so either you show it as zero if you can't make any money or if you can make some money then that's your intrinsic value so you basically mentally go through this exercise that if i buy this option and immediately exercise the option you understand what is meant to what is meant by exercising the option that if i buy a put option i will exercise it by selling the underlying asset at the strike price if i buy a call option i will exercise it by buying the call underlying asset at the strike price okay so i go through this mental exercise that i will immediately i will buy the option and i will immediately exercise it and buy or sell the underlying asset okay and then i will reverse that trade in the market because there's a market price for the underlying asset right are you following the logic you should remember this logic how to conceptually think of you have to think about things conceptually you shouldn't just memorize stuff because then you're not any getting any value added everything should be conceptually clear people seem to be even not very clear but i'm glad i asked this question to him because i think a lot of other people are also not giving clear answers not very clear about if i reduce the strike price to 160 when the market is at one market we just say underlying asset we just refer to as the market okay the cash market here the cash market is this okay this cash does not mean t plus zero this is a different you have to understand everything is contextual in finance okay when we are using cash markets in the context of in comparison in contradistinction to derivative markets here the derivative price is this call options and put options and the cash markets are here okay so if somebody option trader asks you what is the cash market uh, level then you will have to say 178 that is the underlying price okay so so if the cash market is at 178 let's go through this exercise once again okay and this is why you need to maybe replay the videos and listen to it you have to internalize all these concepts you have to be totally focused on concepts. everything is conceptual once you learn it conceptually then you will never forget it in your life if you just try to memorize some stuff before your exams in fact it may not even help you actually in your exams but and you're not really learning anything okay so you'll forget it by the next uh, whatever you memorized you'll forget in the next uh, semester okay so in this case what's happened here intrinsic value try to concentrate okay so two components to the price of an option intrinsic value okay which can only be zero or positive negative we don't write okay and then we have time value so we'll come to time value later but intrinsic value is basically given by the relationship between the underlying price and the strike price yes so the which one what delta. no 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 delta is not intrinsic value don't worry about the delta is showing you we've already discussed delta the delta shows you how much the option price will change if there's a one percent change in the underlying 
So delta and gamma are showing the sensitivity to the eye. So that forget about that compartment right now. We are not in the option sensitivity, option Greeks box right now. We are now in the more basic box. We are trying to understand intrinsic value. And we are trying to understand how option prices consist of intrinsic value and time value. Right? So intrinsic value here. So which option now that once the, un the underlying prices are 178 and I put the strike as 160. So now which option has intrinsic value, positive intrinsic value? Call or put? Call. Why is that? Don't just say it mechanically because mentally you go through this exercise. That I will buy the option, whether it's a call or put. I will do this exercise for both the call and the put and then I'll see what answers I get. So I take the put and what is the exercise? I buy the option. I immediately exercise the option in the market and then I end up with either a long or short position in the underlying asset because of exercise of option. By exercising the option, you will end up with either a long or short position in the underlying asset. Is that clear to everyone? Yes or no? Okay. And then immediately I will reverse that position in the underlying asset in the cash market. So at the end of the day, I'll be left with no position. Is this clear? So there are three steps. I buy the option. I immediately exercise the option. And then I immediately reverse the, uh, immediately exercising the option gives me a position long or short. Are you following Gulati? Exercising the option gives me a long or short position in the market. Okay. So like let's take the example of the put option. If I exercise the put option, that means I'm going short the market at 160. I'm selling the underlying asset at 160 if I exercise the put option. Yes. And then the third step is I will immediately square that position in the cash market okay so here what is going to happen i i sold the uh, stock at once at 160 by exercising the option now i will have to buy it back because my position is sh uh, short so i have to square that position i have to go long right are you following the logic yes saroni are you following the logic no 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 partially then if you don't follow fully then you have to stop me I can't look at, I happen to look at you and I can see your expression is not 100% convinced. So I can't look at everybody's face. No, I have to look at Hardik's face also, then SG1's face also, everyone's face. You have to uh, pipe up and tell me. If you don't understand at any point of time, if you don't understand the logical steps, everything is logical pretty much, right? So you have to, if you don't understand the logical steps, you have to pipe up and tell me that I haven't followed this logic. Okay, so like I'll hold out Kushbu as an example. She is very good at this. So whenever she is not clear, she immediately uh, pipes up and tells me that I didn't follow this. Okay, so you make sure you do that. Everybody has to do that, right? So yeah, which part did you get lost? Yeah. Not underlining price. Who is busy underlining? Somebody is busy. I think you are the only one. No, I think Tanya also underlines a lot. She is also <laughs> busy underlining. Yes. Sir, uh, which option has a intrinsic value? Yeah. That's why you are not clear. So what, what are we saying? First you have to understand uh, what intrinsic value is. Where did we discuss intrinsic value in your, um, in your notes? Let's go back to your own notes before we came to all this stuff we were just talking about IV and here what is the it's already written in your own notes this you guys have access to all this okay so let's uh, let's call, call this the three steps let's go back to your notes and talk about three steps okay give me three steps there's actually a song by Leonard Skinner I don't know if you have you guys heard of Leonard Skinner it's a it's a rock group so this is they have a song called give me three steps okay here are the three steps okay s1 buy let's write in caps please follow carefully so that you can learn Gulati has left okay so buy buy the option this is just how to figure out intrinsic value whether this option and remember intrinsic value we don't write negatives we only write either zero or positive okay so buy the option and we are going to make it very clear call or put okay so first step is this is a mental step don't actually do this but mental steps okay to figure out whether this option has positive intrinsic value or what is the intrinsic value of this option s1 buy the option okay s2 is what is s2 please prompt me yes 
Hardik, what is S2? We explained it. Exercise the option, okay? Exercise the option call or put. Yes, says so S2. Now, this, okay, now let's make it like baby steps. Very, very, very clear, okay? S2, uh, yeah, S2 implies now you have a position which we can write as long or short long long or short okay in the underlying asset okay please follow the logic here now you have a position long or short in the underlying asset depending on whether you exercise now you see baby steps this is baby steps writing okay but understand the logic in baby steps first it is better to go baby steps when you're understanding the logic clearly then it should be completely embedded it should be embedded in your brain forever and depending on whether you exercise so i wrote long or short in the underlying asset so here should i what should i write call or put is this clear if i exercise the call i'll end up with a long position in the underlying asset yes. if i exercise the put i'll end up with a short position in the underlying asset okay now now we come to step three step three is uh, square off everybody understand what's meant by square off square off the above um, Square off the above position long short in the underlying asset by trading so not with a limit order by trading at current current uh, market prices this is clear so to find so this is the explanation of this simple and direction ask what money you can make by exercising the option okay and this we have to eventually talk only about the zero or the positive negative intrinsic value we don't write okay so um, here what we saw is this how uh, ask what money you can make how do you ask that in three steps go through the three steps square off the position is everyone clear about the directions now what we have to follow now let's go here and do this exercise for the put option so if I buy the put option, okay, I, I bought the put option, now I exercise, that means I sell the underlying asset at 160, okay, that gives me a short position in the underlying asset, I have to square it, to square it, I have to buy, okay, so that means I have to buy and I have to buy at market. So the net transaction, the net profit, assuming that here we don't count the, uh, the option premium that we are paying, okay that uh, we are not talking about the option premium that we are paying we talk because that will always be a loss anyway okay that will anyway we are only interested in zero and we are only interested in zero and positive figures what profit you can make but option since you're buying the option you're paying the premium whether you buy a put option or a call option so that premium is always an, always an outgo so that's always it's, it can never contribute to your profit because that part is always going to be a loss it's an expense right you have to pay up to pay, get the option to buy the option you have to always pay up so we don't worry about the option premium component because of course there is a transaction involved you're buying an option you have to pay but the reason for the iv intrinsic value calculation we are not concerned with the option premium because that's only going to contribute to our loss because that's an expense whatever money we make if i buy the option with five dollars eventually if i make ten dollars I'll have to subtract that $5 from that $10 to figure out how much I made, right? So we don't worry about it because we are not concerned with the negative figures. We are we are not concerned with the option premium, okay? Basically here, let's, let's put this clearly here. Ignore option premium in this, in this calculation. Let's make it clear. Okay, all right. So then what we do here is we uh, we buy the option 
but put option initially we're doing the exercise for the put option we buy the option we that exercise the option that means we end up selling the underlying asset at 160 and step three we have to square up this position we have to buy we are short the underlying asset so we have to buy the underlying asset so we go long and we go long at market prices so the market is 178 so I went short at 160 and I squared it off at 178 so did I make a profit or a loss <laughs> Who said profit? <laughs> so good. We will appoint Hardik, the chief trading manager. He will be selling at 160 and buying at 178. Okay. So now you can't be a trading manager. You, have, you already you lost your position. <laughs> Is everyone clear now? What we are doing? Arora, you followed the logic? Okay. Yes, Barur, are you following? Okay. So is this clear now? So we went through the so that means what we can see is that when there's a strike is 160 and the underlying is 178, the put does not have intrinsic value. Because we are making a loss, that's a negative, we don't show the negative. The put has no intrinsic value, they say zero intrinsic value. Okay. So Gulati, we just explained all this while you were out. Now we'll go through the call explanation. Have you followed these three steps? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Where were we now? This is no, this is actually the larger notes. Okay, these three steps. You followed the three steps which we did. Buy the option, exercise the option, then immediately square off the resulting position. Go through this once again, revise. If you don't revise, then that's another reason why you're not able to follow in class. If you just sit on it and wake up on the day like one of your seniors who had to give a supplementary came to me before the end, one day before the exam, and they said, sir, what is the syllabus? For the exam so this is what usually happens right so if you wake up like that you'll not be able to follow during the class okay so everything has to be your concepts have to be clear so you have to revise otherwise it's not going to happen okay so we discovered that the put does not have option intrinsic value you know okay so the put has negative value basically so we don't state the negative so we say it does not have intrinsic value now so then let's look at the call in the call option i buy the call option i exercise the call option which means i buy the underlying at 160 yes okay after buying the underlying and then step three i have to square off my long position if i buy the underlying i mean i have a long position okay so after buying the underlying i have to square it to square the long position i have to sell it okay so i sell it at what at the market price the market price is 178 so i bought something at 160 i bought the underlying asset at 160 and i sold it at one uh, 178 so Gil, did i make money or lose money, make money. now she she's also contending for hardik's position now that hardik has given up his position now Gil has this is losing you're losing money because what you're not focusing on the class what is the problem you're not finding the material that's why we have designated you as a permanent member of the first bench <laughs> so you're not finding the club material interesting so if you're not feeling well i've already told you that if you have a severe headache then you can always ask tell me that you want to go home you can go home i won't what or oh, other classes okay fine anyway but uh, fine if you have a headache for fine but you should try to concentrate okay we have sat through i've sat through exams when i have had high fever i went and gave the exam and somehow managed to clear because i didn't want that burden in the next semester so you somehow manage so you have to fight your young people basically why, why are you all giving up gulati is also going to sleep when he feels tired he goes to sleep unless arora is there behind him pulling the puppet strings you have what so why are you doing all this mma tournament you should be clear about your your MMA is what mixed martial arts. So you're going to replace this McGregor guy who is <laughs> No, but point is be clear about what you want to do. Like I told Anjum also that she was doing some yoga and all that. She was getting. Uh, I told her that you defocus from all this stuff. When you're doing your MBA, you do your MBA. Don't forget about all this other other rubbish. Be focused. Then you are not going to do either properly. This MMA stuff you can do later. Okay. So when you're doing your MBA, focus 100% on your MBA. Don't do other stuff like, of course, if there's a family problem you have to attend to, you leave your uh, time for that when there's some kind of problem that you have to do, take care of. All this stuff you can always do after 18 months, 20 months. It just you're wasting your time by diff diffusing your energy into these two multiple activities, right? Okay. All right, guys. Now let's focus. Okay, uh, so now 
have we made money or no? Yes, is saying we haven't made money. So uh, if so, we have bought the underlying asset at 160 and we have sold it at 178. Yes. This is clear. Three steps. When we followed the three steps, okay, we have made money. So this option has the call option has positive intrinsic value here. Okay, so that's what we are trying to figure out. Basically, that uh, you can also imagine this as a situation where you bought the at the money 160 call. Yes. It's the same situation where as if you bought the 160 at the money call and then the price, the underlying price shot up to 178. It's the same result. Now the option initially when you bought the at the money call, both the at the money call and the put they didn't have intrinsic value. Okay, but uh, they had zero intrinsic value. But now essentially when once this uh, thing shoots up to 178, now the call has intrinsic value but the put has lost, uh, put has no intrinsic value. This is clear. Yes. Yes, Gulati, have you followed? Okay, so that's what we are talking about. All we are talking about here is how we are going to take. So this entire discussion, I just wanted to make it because I don't want you to just mechanically remember this framework. You should understand the logic behind the framework. And therefore, and while understanding the logic behind the framework, it should also reinforce in your mind the basic theoretical uh, the, uh, equation that we studied that the option price is equal to the intrinsic value plus the time value. And what drives the intrinsic value? So here you have a comprehensive and yet simple framework that the option price consists of intrinsic value and the time value. And the intrinsic value is driven by the relationship between the strike and the underlying price. Okay, and once you lock in the strike price by buying the option or selling the option, then only thing that affects the only thing that affects the intrinsic value is the movement of the underlying. Okay, because that keeps moving around. And then on the other side, the time value side, it's affected by the days to expiration plus the eyeball. But once again, when you buy the option or sell the option, the days to expiration is locked in because you have specified the option. Then after you buy the option, the only thing that moves around is the eyeball on the time value front okay so the eyeball is driving the time value the underlying price movement eyeball movement is driving the time value and the underlying price movement is driving the intrinsic value so they are affecting the two components of the option price now once again i have to cut marks for mehak and um, kanika because they are involved actually we should separate the group how should we separate them now they're right boxed in so in the next class we'll separate them so this is a pro problematic buddy group Okay, where should we write their name in today's class? Where is today's class? Okay, today is 110. So today's special, like when you go to a restaurant, they have like today's special. So this is like, this is like today's special. Okay, Kanika and... <laughs> Okay, all right. Okay, so we went through this, we went through the, the, so we are talking about a decision making matrix and we are just trying to make sure that we understand the complete logic for the decision making matrix. And we are talking about moneyness of options, which is essentially the intrinsic value and the changes in the eyeball, which is driving the time value. Okay, so we can write this here also as uh, just as an indicator. This is the intrinsic value. This is, so what this is meant to show you is that the moneyness of the option is really uh, affecting the intrinsic value and the changes in the eyeball is affecting the time value okay all right so we have understood this framework we could have just spent we could have saved ourselves a lot of time and just uh, mechanically understood this framework that this is what you should do okay uh, but instead of doing that we want to understand uh, the and, and use this also to rehash as we can see that many people were not clear about the intrinsic value time value that basic structure which we already covered a per, per several sessions ago is this clear now yes. have you understood now Saloni yes. is this clear you guys are clear please revise it's just not sufficient go, go home and do MMA do options <laughs> your MMA and all will basically what's the point of doing MMA I mean you, uh, you can always do it all but do it first take care of your MBA workload okay what's up you're wasting so much money on this you're spending so much money on this program don't waste it make something come out of it okay McGregor is now retired 
He is not retired, knocked out by. Huh? Okay, new one. Okay. He got knocked out by that boxer, no? Floyd Mayweather Jr. The boxer knocked him out. You didn't follow that. Okay. Anyway, so Floyd Mayweather Jr. is actually one of the most successful boxers. He has a 52 0 uh, knockout record. That's the guy who knocked out this McGregor fellow, no? When they had a fight. You didn't follow all this stuff. Okay. Good point. Good point. Okay. All right. Okay. So yes, Mehak, what is the problem? What is Kanika doing? We shall we? Uh, uh, you want to lose more points? Yes, sir. Yes. <laughs> okay. All right, guys. Now. Please make sure that you understood the framework, okay, and how, what is the logic behind this, okay? So, um, okay, so this is what you have to do, okay? Now let's do one more exercise so that this the idea is completely embedded, okay? Let's look at Microsoft. Let's look at Microsoft. Yeah. Sorry, uh, Sakshi also had a question. Then I stopped you, and then I never. Okay. Okay. Fine. Okay. Yeah. Would we know whether the implied volatility is going to be bearish? That's the same way that you look at the stock price of Microsoft. Technically, technically, it's you know it is fair to say that there is no real way to know for sure. Okay, in the same way that we know that the sun will rise in the east tomorrow. We don't know with that kind of confidence. We don't really know what's going to happen to Microsoft now. Maybe the peak has already been reached. Maybe now within three months it will be down to 120. We have no way of telling. All that could be that it's going to keep on shooting up 145, 155. So that's the basic uncertainty of life which is essentially reflected in markets and economies. Just like your industrial production figure or your GDP data or your inflation data, you have no way of knowing what's going to happen. So that view that you have to take, that's uh, that's what I was talking about, that in any finance role that you take up, you will always find that eventually you have to take a view on markets, some market or the other, a debt market or an equity market or a commodity market, or in the case of options, you are not only taking views on the underlying. So this is a new thing that you're learning today. Okay that in options trading and this is not even just the all not even the full picture of option trading this is just option trading from the point of view of a directional speculator if you're talking about option trading from the point of view of an option market maker it is much more complex because these guys have to do what Gulati was focusing on the delta gamma and vega and theta so essentially the option market maker has to essentially manage both delta gamma together because these are both driven by the underlying movement then he has to manage the Vega because it's driven by the eyeball movement. And then he has to manage the Theta also because he's continuous. If he's long options, the Theta is continuously working against him. So he has to be very careful about how many options he's long. Okay. Because every day he's losing money. So the management, essentially the difference between. So let me also tell you essentially what we are not studying, which we don't have the time and it's more complicated. Okay. That the, addition, the option market maker, in addition to what you are doing as a directional speculator, he has to additionally manage these option Greeks. He has to manage the risk of these uh, these sensitivities. He has to manage the... Uh, so he will be trading in the underlying asset. Okay. He will be buying and selling options, which you guys will also do. But what you will not be doing, what you're not allowed to do in this project, please remember that. Okay. Nobody should do that. Not you're not allowed to trade in the underlying asset please be very clear about that i will not repeat this direction in your project that is starting next week no trading is allowed in the underlying asset you're only allowed to buy and sell options is this clear okay no you were not automatically given because first step you bought the option or sold the option and then you exercise the option. So Okay, so that's a good question. That's a good question. What she's saying is that if she chooses to exercise options, okay. So let me put another. In most of the cases, what will happen is you don't really. That's very rare that you exercise. Although you're doing, you're trading in American style options, okay. So you can technically exercise before maturity, okay. But what I would suggest is you don't exercise. Don't uh, keep your life even more simple because actually in life. In, in real life as well uh, there are very few situations where it's optimal to exercise uh, American options before expirations 
okay there are very very few situations like when there's a case of non-dividend paying stock and interest rates are very high and a combination of those factors so let's not complicate our lives so let's also put an additional role uh, additional rule into the picture which is first is that you're not allowed to trade the underlying asset you have to only buy and sell call and put options okay and second is don't exercise don't if you feel that like what you feel your question is relevant okay suppose you bought a call option and you feel let's see why Garvit is getting restless okay one minute okay yes which question okay what Tanya is asking is that if I exercise the option then that will giving because I told her that you're not allowed to trade in the underlying asset so what she's saying is what if there's a situation where I decide to exercise the option okay so, so then you'll end up with a position in the underlying asset okay and then you might have to square it off so then uh, what I told her that's a very good question because that gives it brings us to a new rule that I'm further ex uh, in introducing into the project no exercising options because most of the time it's not really appropriate anyway in this project the skill that you're going to develop is the skill of jointly forecasting the underlying asset price and the eye wall so jointly you're looking at first you're looking at the Microsoft stock price and taking a view is this going down now or is this gonna go up now you take that view then you go to I'll just take a few minutes uh, then you go to the eyeball page first you start with optionistics because you'll have more data then in this symbol part you write MSFT it will change okay it will change the display then you come down here look at the volatility chart okay look at the eyeball movement in in the case of Microsoft you can see slightly different from Facebook although both are tech stocks and again take a view at uh, take a view on this orange line you have to again take a view on this orange line based on the views you've taken in the first two uh, on the underlying asset and the orange line I'm recapping the decision framework right now okay so now you have a framework for trading okay and then based on where whatever you've done if you are bullish on Microsoft but bearish on eyeball then where do you go sell you sell puts okay if you're bullish on the underlying asset and you're bearish on eyeball then you are selling puts so now you sell puts now coming back to Tanya's question what if at some point of time your view is no longer you feel that you no longer have this view so you want to take your profit and exit in this case you just sell off the option in the in this case you sold a put so you buy back the put is this clear you buy back the put all right so don't exercise so two things are forbidden trading in the underlying asset and exercise of options let's make it very simple for you so you're just going to be buying and selling options but this will basically test your ability to forecast the underlying asset as well as the eyeball and play that continuous uh, continuously changing dynamic all the time okay and you have to do it for all the stocks that are given to you so is everyone clear about what has to be done yes sir. yes okay Aurora are you following clear clearly what what we have to do the decision framework is clear the steps are clear you have to now exercise you have to run through the steps for all the stocks in your list this is clear so start cracking get get cracking from tonight itself and you start trading on what 7th of 7th October okay please be clear please remember to send me the emails of your designated project trading account this is clear okay every team quickly do it before you forget and then when you get a response some of you guys like Saloni and Manotra and all, if you get a response just respond to it and just reset the account and Gulati when you can you quickly reset your account and send me the results they have told you okay but don't say today evening it's this evening okay you guys need to learn all this stuff also no today don't say today evening this evening okay yes any technical questions Again, one minute, one minute, one minute. 
One minute, let me just correct your English. Also. How will we look at it? How will we look at it? How will we be looking? Okay. So what I will do? What will I do? Okay. All right. Yes. Like he said, today evening. Don't say. Don't say today evening. This morning. This evening. Yes. Okay. So we should uh, trade only on the eyeball and the underlining price. Uh, Not underlining price. You are also underlining. Like uh, who has the mic? Who has the mic? Give him the mic. Let him use the mic. There's too much. There's too much uh, noise. Yeah. So I was saying that uh, from seven. Now we have to trade on the basis of the eyeball uh, and the underlying price views. Views. Not on the time series and the. Uh, no, 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 no. One minute. Okay. Let's be clear about this. Both of these are time series data charts. This is the time series data chart. Microsoft underlying asset price. Okay. Are you saying this is not a time series data chart? The eyeball charts and the H wall chart. Forget the H wall. This is not a. This is also a time series data chart. What does it seem like to you? What is this eyeball here? What does it say here? Yes, sir. October, November. That means all the days in October. I presume this is daily data. So they have taken the eyeball. I will just it on both of these by looking on both of these charts. We have to trade the. Looking at both of these charts. Yeah. Yeah. This is basically it. These two charts. Okay. Remember to use optionistics because that's called longer term eyeball data. You can have a better view. Okay. You have better perspective. Then. You form your views. Yes, sir. Then you come to the matrix. Yes, then you put yourself in the box. Then there are some other decision problems that we have to solve because some other decision problems have not yet been solved. Which strike will you buy? Suppose you have decided to buy Microsoft calls. There are so many strikes. Which one will you buy? This is we are going to deal with in the next class. Because you still don't have the and which expiration? Look at all these expiration: three days, ten days, seventeen days. If I close this, I got twenty-four days, thirty-one days, thirty-eight days, forty-five days, eighty days. Which one will I choose? If I choose thirty-eight days, let's say I choose thirty-eight days. In thirty-eight days, I have so many strikes. I have so many strike rates. I know I want to buy calls, but I have so many strike prices. Which call should I buy? One forty-four call, one forty call, one thirty-seven call. Now I will give you further rules for these. How to decide these? Right now we have done only the first two problems. Is this clear? Anybody else? Tanya, you had a technical question. Where is Tanya? Tanya, you're busy underlining. Okay. What is your question? Use the mic. Mic is not working. EPS and other common stocks that we have added to that list. So why? So SPY is an ETF. Yes. And you have entered some of the Tesla is not in our program. Okay. The Microsoft. Microsoft, Oracle, PGF. Yes. So why entering these high click on stock? And after that, when I trade, I click on option trading. Yeah, you right click here and you right click here and it will show you trading tools and option. It may not show you here because I've already been using it, so it's giving me as a frequently used auto complete. And you have to go through trade. If you don't get it directly, you can go through trading tools. Okay. Actually, here you have typically you have a box here also. You can directly launch this, but you can go through trading tools and find option trader. Okay. There are many other types. All the stuff you can learn on your own on the market system. Yes. Is this clear? Any other question? Okay. Now don't underline. Okay. Anybody else? Any other technical question? Okay. Okay. Regarding my uh, my, I uh, all those who are doing I uh, your cap capstone project under me. Yes, sir. I just want to get you guys out of this data analysis business. Okay. So I'm going to put a restriction and say that to do a conceptual project. Pick a field. There are no so many areas of finance which you need to learn about. Forget about this data analysis business. Learn something. Learn some. Pick an area like swaps. Just do option trading strategy. Don't worry about data. Will you feel? Will you feel like you're somehow lesser if you don't do data? Thank <laughs> you.